What size refrigerant piping do I need for my split unit? Do you know how to size refrigerant pipe? If you don't, today is a video about refrigerant piping HVAC basics. I'm gonna talk about pressure loss, velocity, things not to do when you're sizing refrigerant piping and what can happen if you do do things that you're not supposed to do. So, before we start today's video, hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's get started. Every split system unit is shipped with a factory mounted sweat fitting. Right there are the sweat fittings. And the interconnecting refrigerant lines should be sized to match the factory supplied fittings unless the application dictates a different refrigerant line size because of pressure drop, velocity constraints, or line length. Let's check out the sweat fitting for our three ton unit. This is a 36,000 BTU unit, YHG 36. We're gonna take a look at the sweat fitting for the vapor line and then the sweat fitting for the liquid line. And for the liquid line, of course, it is 3 8 See that 3 8 copper tubing there? goes right into that sweat fitting. And then for our vapor line connection or suction line connection, it's three quarter. You see how that three quarter copper fits right in there? This is a five ton unit. It's a YXV60, so 60 is 60,000 BTUs. You can see we have a larger sweat fitting for this five ton unit. It's not three quarter, it is seven eighths. And that is seven eighths copper right there and you can see beside it is three quarter copper and this three quarter definitely would not fit for this connection see that way too large but that seven eighths is perfect now let's take a look at the the uh, liquid line sweat fitting and you can see it's perfect for the three eighths here is three eighths tubing this is half inch tubing right here this is three quarter tubing and then this is seven eighths and this is soft copper this is soft drawn copper and this is type l hard drawn copper okay now the difference between the soft and the hard is this went through an anneal process an annealing process where it was heated up and then it was allowed to cool down so it's easier to bend but you'll find that this will be used on your five ton or larger system. This is inch and an eighth, and this is typically used on commercial jobs, hard drawn copper with some VRF systems. I've had to use only hard drawn. And in hard drawn coppers, you can run it in longer lengths and have fewer supports at longer intervals. You can have uh, supports at longer intervals. With the soft copper, you'll find that it's gonna sag if you don't put your supports a little bit closer than you would have had on that hard drawn copper. 3 8 copper is used for liquid line, half inch copper. I've seen five ton units with half inch copper for liquid lines. This right here is three quarter. This is typically used for up to three tons. So you'll see three quarter on a two ton units, vapor line, two and a half ton, three ton. And then anything above three ton, you definitely need to go with seven eighths for your vapor line. So this is seven eighths copper. Typically this will be used on three and a half ton, four ton and five ton. And then you'll have this inch and an eighth for your five ton unit as well. Depends on the application. Always consult the installation instructions or the customer booklet that the manufacturer provides with the equipment that you plan on installing. I am going to show you why because this information that I'm giving you is easily found in the installation instructions. What I talked about with refrigerant piping and I had the layout on that table of different pipe sizes I have written right here so that you can pause the video, you can stop it if you want to, you can write all this down. From one and a half ton to three ton units, that means one and a half, two ton, two and a half, three, you will have these liquid lines, pipe sizes, and this vapor line pipe size. Liquid line is three eighths, vapor line or suction line is three quarter. When you move from a three ton to a three and a half, you and for three and a half, for four, and for five ton, you're gonna have three eighths for your liquid line pipe size. And then for your vapor line pipe size, you're gonna have seven eighths, seven eighths. And then for the five ton unit, you may have to actually up the pipe size from seven eighths 
to inch and an eighth. Now, if you've paused the video, if you're ready to move forward, let's do it. And I'm gonna show you how you can get this information. You always wanna consult the manufacturer's installation instructions because the manufacturer knows best and there's some guidance in there for you to make it easy. This is our customer booklet that came with our equipment. Do not throw this away because you may have a tabular data sheet. And if you do, at the bottom, you'll find every model and serial number from their lowest BTU, which is one and a half ton, to their highest, which is five tons. And you'll have a refrigerant connection service valve size. So you can see right here with our three ton unit, we have three eighths and three quarter. But with our four ton unit, we have three eighths and seven eighths. Now with our five ton unit, if you scroll over, it says three eighths and seven eighths and it has this little symbol right here. If you go down here, you'll see this symbol says adapter fitting must be installed for the required inch and eighth line set size. So you need to make sure that you have this information because it's pretty awesome now I'm gonna show you another guide that you can get online to be able to learn more. This is a must have book, a great resource to learn all about piping design. Not just refrigerant piping, but water piping, steam piping. I got this book when I took my test to get my CMC license. Now I have my general mechanical contractor's license and this is one of the books that I had to have to take the test. So this is chapter three. It's all about refrigerant piping. And in chapter three, you have charts. I'm going to walk you through one of these charts so that we can learn more about how you would size your suction line or your liquid line for an R22 unit using this chart. Let's go over the liquid line first. So here's the chart. Along the bottom, you have from two tons upwards to 500 tons of refrigeration. And then right here on the left column going up is the line set length, okay? So let's say we had 50 foot of line set length for our four ton unit. We would go over until it matched up with our four tons and we would have a three eighths line set size for our liquid line, okay? So that's how to size for the liquid line for R22 for pressure drops corresponding to two degrees Fahrenheit because we don't want a pressure drop more than that. So that's for R22. Now we go up here. This is for our suction line. And of course, this is for copper tubing. So this chart, same thing. Let's say we have a five ton unit and we have 50 foot of line set length for that five ton unit. We go from the 50 over to the five right here. And it lines up with the seven eighths. So that means our suction line for the R22 five ton unit at 50 foot should be seven eighths. And this is a chart that you can use to be able to size your pipes for your split system. Wanted to walk you through that chart there. Definitely get that book, link in the description for the book. Now, when do I change my refrigerant pipe size and why do I change my refrigerant pipe size? My rule of thumb is 75 foot. If I have a pipe length that is less than 75 foot, I'm gonna stick with the factory size fitting. If I have more than 75 foot in length, if I have 150 foot in length, then I am going to change the size of the refrigerant piping to maintain good oil return and also good capacity. Let's compare the larger suction line to the smaller suction line and see how that affects the velocity and the pressure drop. The larger suction line will have a decreased velocity and a decreased pressure drop. The smaller suction line will have an increased velocity and an increased pressure drop. So if you make the line smaller, it increases the velocity and it also increases the pressure drop. If you make the line larger, it will decrease the velocity so you won't have as much velocity and you won't have as much pressure drop. Too much velocity causes noise and vibration. Not enough velocity and you don't have proper oil return. So that directly affects the life of the compressor. Too much pressure drop causes a reduction in capacity. For instance, too much pressure drop, the liquid lines carrying liquid to the indoor expansion valve. 
And if you got too much pressure drop, then the liquid begins to flash and you have an insufficient amount of liquid going to the expansion valve to feed that indoor coil. So you're not going to have proper operation because of course it's supposed to be a steady column of liquid, but since you have a pressure drop and you don't have the right line size, that is no longer liquid coming to your expansion valve. So of course it's not going to be as efficient as it's supposed to. Now let's talk about the vapor line. Our vapor line is carrying that gas from the indoor coil to our compressor. And when we, whenever we have too much pressure drop, then the gas coming to the compressor is not as dense. There's not enough. And of course, this is reducing the capacity of the compressor. And we know that lower suction pressures cause liquid migration to the compressor. And if we're not boiling off all of that refrigerant inside of the evaporator, then it's not going to be as a gas completely coming to our compressor. So there you go. That's definitely a reason why you should make sure that your line size is proper. Let's check out the refrigerant pipe size for this five ton unit here on this bank. That is inch and eighth, and this is three eighths. And this is a five ton unit, R22. This is another five ton unit. It is a 60, which is 60,000 BTUs. It's R22, and this is inch and an eighth, and three eighths. Most of the time, you're gonna use the same size copper as the sweat fittings, so inch and eighth, three eighths. Look at this super cool tool bag I got. Got this from my buddy John Willis. SOE Tactical Gear. Not gonna take my land away, got my patch on there. Love this tool bag, got all my little tools in here. Super heavy duty, durable. Go check this out. I got the link in the description if you want a bag like that. Now, if you want this piping application data sheet, I want you to type this in the Google search bar, PN247077. Once you type that in, you're gonna click enter and then you're gonna download this PDF. This is going to be a great guide for you to learn more about refrigerant piping. We've also got some capacity reduction charts, which I'll show you, but general piping recommendations and refrigerant line length for split system air conditioners and heat pumps. Download this, it is free. It is information that will help you. And we've got charts, capacity reduction chart, line size for each tonnage. That is awesome. Check that out. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. If you want help with your project, you want HVAC tech support, I'm here to help. Click the join button, become a member. Let me know in the comments, say I joined, and I'll give you my email. Before you leave, hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. You have been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.